People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You already know who it is, Arsenio Buck, reporting live from Bangkok. Man, welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show, and welcome back to the first live episode in my, oh my goodness, so gorgeous condominium. I'm so glad to have moved out of that place where I wish should not have been for that long, and now it's all about just removing that last little it bit in terms of my job, my workplace, and then I'm out of there. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <sighs> and with that being said, guys, I'm going to tell you some stories about Thailand. The sexual mask. Lewis Ho's The Sexual Mask, The Introduction. Now, out there in America, there is a different thing. Of course, I'm going to be talking about so many different things and so many things I've witnessed, but I'm going to tell you a nice little story from here. So if you actually walk around, there's a place called Nana. Okay, it's in the heart of Bangkok. This is actually, I wouldn't say it's the, well, it is the red light district. It is the saddest place. Of course, you got a lot of places. Of course, you got Ho Chi Minh City. You got Angeles City. You have Manila. You have a lot of places where, for the lack of a better term, these Anglo foreigners go because they are either escaping their past or they're trying to fulfill their sexual fantasies. It is unbelievably sad. I mean, even coming out of the gym last night in the heart of, um, in the heart of Bangkok, and seeing all of these foreigners walk around looking for sex, it is one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. So here we go. Basically, I mean, all it comes down to is, I mean, a lot of, it's like a night market right there on the sidewalk. You have nowhere to walk. And the more you walk and walk and walk, this it could be, you could be sitting next to, or you could be standing right next to a stand where they're selling clothes. And then there's a little small bar where there are underage Thai women. Trying to solicit customers. There's ad, there's alleys, there there's side streets, bars, clubs, you name it, whatever there is. Okay. Uh, basically wherever there is, in the main tourist destinations, you know what I mean. I'm talking about the Soy Cowboy, which is very famous for, of course, a lot of old foreign men that actually go there to, of course, go to bars and have all these young women go up to them. I mean. Oh my God, this is, again, one of the biggest problems with humanity. What do you, why do you think so many, and I kept ask. I asked my students all the time, I was like, why do you think so many men over the age of 50 come here? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no, no, no offense to all of those over the age of 50, but why do you think they come here? And they're like, oh, they come here to see the beaches. Come on, seriously, think about it. Are old foreign men, are old Australian men going to America to see the beaches? Perhaps. But the thing is, a lot of prostitution is banned in America, in a lot of different states. But here in Thailand? Mm -mm. Now, am I saying all Thailand is like this? No, I just met a remarkable yoga instructor yesterday who I'm going to be doing a podcast with. I met some of the most, in boy, last night was insane by all means, man. I was working, working out with 10 women, and these women were mad. They were insane. They look like CrossFit women. You know, they're all, bo I wouldn't say they're bulky, but they're... Boy, the bodies are insane, okay? Are they like that? Of course not. But the thing is, a lot of people, they turn, of course, a lot of Thai women, they turn to prostitution as a means of making money. And is it because they want to? No, it's because their parents tell them to. So from, I don't give a damn if you're from the Northeast, North, South, uh, South, uh, Southeast, it doesn't matter. Basically, women of all colors, all places, all nationalities... I'm sorry, not all colors, all places, doesn't really matter. They come into Bangkok because why they can make an easy buck. So if you look at, of course, materialism, this also coincides with materialism in terms of the women. Because if you ask the women, why are you doing this? A lot of them say, oh, well, I don't have a job. There, there's no excuse. There's no excuse, okay? I'm not even going to sit here and preach it to why women even do this. But a lot of them say because they want an iPhone 10, an iPhone 6, an iPhone 5. When those phones began coming out, they wanted to be part of that cool click. So they went went on ahead and started selling their body. And so this is what I've seen. Um, this is what I work with. Uh, there was one teacher I worked with way in the past. Um, he lives with the girl, you know, lives with this girlfriend. And he said, ooh, look at this girl. You know, she sent me a picture yesterday. I'm going to go do her tonight. I'm going to do this and do that. And I'm like... Okay, and I'm sorry, you're a teacher, right? You know, I'm asking myself in my head, I'm like, Jesus, this guy's a teacher. And I'm like, okay, so what about your career? What did you used to do in China? He's like, oh, I used to have sex with women in China and Korea. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, of course, this is like, a, oh, my God. Oh, man, this is, of course, a middle-aged uh, Anglo-Saxon. 
And I'm like, dude, what are you doing with your life? Hell, even the people I, um, I've worked with in the past, they would have, let's just say they would have sexual relations with the staff at the school. And I'm like, isn't that like against the law in other countries? Like you cannot engage in, you know, you, you know, you can't, you, you cannot be flirtatious with other staff members and stuff like that. Cause that could ultimately doom the office or wherever you work. Doesn't matter. I'm appalled. I'm appalled. I don't know. Um, a, a lot of people, uh, man, I've, I've, well, I remember one story. I mean, guys, this is, I'm just full of stories this morning. I remember one story. It was actually on a teaching education site. Um, and this guy was talking about what he does normally through the week. And this was sick. He was like, normally I stalk out my prey. I stalk out my prey during the week. And then on the weekend, I bring them on over, have sex with them. And I never talk to them again. If I can't find anyone throughout the week, I hurry up and pay for it. I mean, this is the sickening part. And it's, it's, I wouldn't even say it's practicality. It's what this other teacher said. He said, hey, uh, Arsenio, I mean, they're doing this because the libido has the hold of them. They're so sexually driven that they come here because they can fulfill their sexual fantasies that they can't get in their country. Obviously, do you think a man over the age of 50 could be able to go to another uh, any other country. Of course, let's mark out the Southeast Asian countries. I don't consider Malaysia and Singapore to be in a part of Southeast Asia or Brunei because it's impossible to do that in those countries. These girls wouldn't look at them twice. But can they go to the likes of Japan or go to the likes of any country in Europe and do this? I mean, if you pay heavily at the head, you know red light districts in Amsterdam and whatnot, perhaps. But I'm talking about just being able to go on a website and say, hey, yeah, I'm an Anglo. You want to come on over? Sure. And I'm talking this. I'm talking to you guys from an African American standpoint because this is non-existent for me, which actually plays in one of the best favors for me. Because me, I'm on the grind. I'm on the hustle. I'm on. I'm pushing projects. I'm doing a lot of different things. But other people, they're not so. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not so. Um, oh my god, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not so lucky. So in a way, my African American, my skin color actually plays a, a pivotal role. In this entire uh, me, of me staying here in Thailand because women don't look at me. Now, the so sex, the successful women, especially in the heart of Bangkok and other places. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But see, that's there's a difference between, you know, successful. I can't even say the goddamn word. Successful women and prostitutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I work out at a gym where, you know, it's pretty pricey. And these women are gorgeous, CrossFit, we work as a team, we do this, we do that. Uh, I work out there in the morning, work out there in the evening. I met a girl, I just met a girl last night, Australian, straight out of the Air Force. You know, um, uh, all these other women, they're successful in their own field of on divorce. But when they come to this gym, they actually just push everything aside and they focus just on that. And say, hey, you know what, we're all part of a family, we're all part of a team, we're all going to get through this workout together. Anyways, I don't know where I'm going with this, but... I'm not saying that all Thailand is like this, but if you look for trouble, especially in this country, you will find all kinds of trouble. So now that I live in Bangkok, luckily I live way on the outskirts. I wouldn't say way on the outskirts, you know, probably just a couple of stations down from where the mayhem is. And I've already developed my mind, my conscious, my paradigm to the fact where I'm like, no, I got stuff I need to do. Damn, it's 6.49 a.m. Now... In the morning, at, you know, at 8 a.m., I'm going to have to commute to that so-called place of, you know, where I still work right now. Um, and this is only for a short time, too. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be able to com- do so many different things. But, I mean, it just depends on your purpose, your intention. Like, my purpose, my intention when I first came here probably wasn't in, in the best standings. I was like, you know what, I'm going to come to Thailand because they accept black people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Everything that's happening to me right now, right now, is the best thing that ever happened to me. But <sighs> all I'm trying to say is I've worked with the wife tourists. You know, they came here to marry a woman. Uh, and d- that doesn't mean that they're not going to have sex with other women. I hear some of the worst of stories, you know, in the past. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a shame. Uh, I, you know, but hey, luckily I was never that person that's, you know, ever treated women as objects. My mom raised me properly. Now for those men who come out here for all the wrong reasons, hey, you know, they come from a different, a completely different dimension, a completely different time frame, a completely different everything. But me, 
luckily, my mom taught me from a very beginning age to say, you know what, you're going to treat women with respect or I'm going to kick your ass. And I said, hey, by all means, mom. And so when I'm on the beat, you know, on the sky train and I'm doing this and I'm pushing projects and now living in Bangkok and being around these people that I've always wanted to be around. Now, everything is going to begin to flow much, much more faster instead of, you know, in increments as last time. But in terms of women, I'm getting a little bit off track in terms of women, men from all different walks of life, they come here to buy women. They have a sexual mask. Lewis Host talked about it in his book uh, from a guy by the name of Neil Strauss. Never heard of him. He actually made uh, a book, created a book, wrote a book called, uh, you know, How to Become a Pickup Artist, stuff like that. And this guy was found himself in like a free-for-all, like a sex party in the heart of Paris. Can you believe that? Like one woman just came, right? He was at a sex party in, in Paris. He wrote it in his book. Neil Strauss. Lewis Host wrote this in his book. I ain't trying to get into detail, but this woman came right up to him and he said a couple of words and he said, oh my God, yes. You know, Neil went on to quote um, in Lewis Ho's books, he said, this is the kind of woman I fantasized about as a teenager, a woman just coming up to him and asking him for mm, 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 an indiscriminate one. And more than anything I've experienced so far, this seems like free sex because there's no spiritual baggage, drug baggage, or even relationship baggage around it. In fact, there's no baggage or encumbrances whatsoever, just randomly intersecting body parts. And you know what? From that point going forward, that was the beginning of his fall. Because when he went to Paris and tried going back to America, he had three different women and he was breaking their hearts. And next thing you know, one was like a knife, you know, a, a axe wielding beast trying to kill him and everything. And then he realized that basically being that pickup artist he he ended up being that type of human being that destroyed women, women you know their their lives and so lewis ho wrote in his book and he quoted he said when neil began writing the game which is the book he was by his own admission a sexual amateur worse than that he was what he calls an average frustrated chump a AFC. The story in his introduction to this secret society of pickup artists. Men who make finding and sleeping with lots of women their primary purpose in life, like a game Strauss told his editor uh, that he wanted to write about in his community, right? And because it was interesting. But in reality, he was tired of being alone and feeling like a loser. At one sad point in his life, Neil had even considered finding a male order bride, like a lot of men over a particular age do here. They come here because, hey, they want to settle down. They want to get remarried because, you know, their marriage completely fell apart overseas. And so they are here. He tells the story of having been on the road with the band Motley Crue, if you guys know about that. Uh, for a book that he was writing and not getting even a kiss from a single girl by almost every definition of what it means to be a man in America, Neil felt like a failure and was less than guys who were having lots of sex. And so this is, I guess you could say this is one of the, the big drivers. This is why so many different people uh have that inferiority complex they develop it at such a young age because they're saying to themselves they're like oh my god you know what i can't do this just like me if i look back and i look at the scott the the kelly dansby the 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 all these guys who wore those letterman jackets the big jockeys back in high school they had the girls they had the cars but did i let that get to me mm -mm. Mm -mm, because I felt like I was a unique individual in my own right. Of course, my personality hadn't evolved at that particular old man in the fifth year in hands along with the university student. No, he was holding hands with the university student. And I was, and, and, and the way Thai people in that shopping center were looking at them, they were completely aghast, like, wow. But it's crazy because they look at them, they start gossiping, they look at me, they give me a dirty look. They never gave the Anglo the dirty look for actually coming here from all the way around the world to by a university student no they looked at me it's kind of like what just happened in last october when i went to um a restaurant had a 75 year old anglo man his son which was probably about 45 years old and then a 15 year old student and of course she spoke thai she looked a little bit thai she could have been half it doesn't really matter but the 75 year old man was trying to touch her 
in the middle of the restaurant, and they were sitting closer and closer to her. And I was just boiling up. And you know what? She didn't show any signs of 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 needing help, so I didn't, of course, butt in or whatnot. But this is what I see every day. This is what happens in Cambodia. This is what happens all across the Philippines. This is what happens in a lot of different places, man. And so that going back to, you know, Neil Strauss story, men thinking men well, men think sleeping with a number of women at the same time is considered to be cool. And, you know, this is what I see every day. And Lewis Hose, he went on to quote, he said, if you th- if you might think that you want that. You're wrong. He said that and that's the top off this podcast. So that's the full that's the full introduction. What I've observed and the sad reality of everything that's basically taking place out here. Um, again, I can't change stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to try to change stuff like that. I'm not even going to try to put my emotion into stuff like that. I'm just giving you guys the full book story. Now, Thailand has its extremes, though. Like I just told you last night, I met a girl straight out of the Air Force with this massive guy. I'm guessing, assuming straight out of the Air Force, too. Coolest people on the planet. Um, and they love life out here. Obviously, I love life out here. I stay away from the bad, and I love being around the successful. However, if you go, if you come here to Thailand, I mean, even when I went on the vacation just about three, four weeks ago to that place called Kanjanaburhi, again, 40 to 70 year old men just stalking these massage parlors, trying to go in, well, obviously going in there to solicit in sex. This is what I see with my own eyes. A lot of men have this sexual mask on. This could be probably a four to five part podcast. So you guys stay tuned for more. But that's the basis. That's basically the beginning of it all. Because I really, and I mean, I really needed to bring this up. Of course, I'm not. And if you fit this picture and you're listening to my podcast and this and that, hey, you got the mask. And there is a way to take off this mask. Because if not, you're going to be like some of those homeless people out there on the, sh- on the park benches in a foreign country. Literally. I've seen men throw away so much money in one night with sex, buying sex here in Thailand. To whereas they are now sleeping on a park bench and the embassy won't even help them. Of course, they could be backpackers. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't really matter. How many people, you guys don't even know this. I'm just going to tell you this right now. Men throw themselves off balconies. In Patea, Patea is one of the most notorious places for where the mafia exists. You know, there's a lot of police stuff that goes on over there. The Russia, and there's a lot of different things. But Anglo men throw themselves off balconies in Patea. They call themselves jumpers, and it happens definitely in probably a one to two week basis. And this is what happens when they bring a prostitute over, and the prostitute ends up stealing everything from them. Um, and they're just at the end of their lives. Don't be that person i'm imploring you not to be that person so guys with that being said a little bit of a serious podcast this morning but stay tuned i got the second part coming in tomorrow i hope uh i'm gonna be writing my blog uh during my commute because now that i'm on probably a one hour and 15 minute commute now to work which isn't too bad because in arizona they do the same thing um, I'm going to be able to do a lot in terms of uploading this, writing this, writing that. And of course, because it's a Saturday and I'm basically going to be starting at the end line of this particular place. I'm going to be able to get a seat and I'm going to be able to write my ass off. So I'm probably going to get a little bit of a pump chest workout in, uh, make my breakfast and head on out. So guys have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. Stay tuned for the next Christmas podcast. That's going to be debuting tonight. If you guys find this useful, please share it, like it, and talk to me. This is your host, Arsenio, over and out.